Hey guys, Woods Farm here. Just back out working on the scout car. Um, we got some warmer temperatures this week, uh, mid-February. It's going up to around uh, zero degrees. So I decided um, I've kind of been procrastinating, but uh, I'm going to go back and start re-welding a lot of the um, the stuff that's just tacked in place. Um, things like the uh, transfer case mounts and the braces for the cross members. A lot of that stuff needs to get re-welded. Um, I'm probably going to break out the stick welder to do some of that. Um, so there's going to be a lot of fumes and in the garage, so we're able to open the door because uh, it's a little warmer outside. Um, other things we might get to, um, the shocks, the front shocks, and potentially um, replacing the radiator. That's something that's on the to-do list. Okay, so I've removed the floor and the wiring harness, the vacuum lines, all that stuff. I don't want to have anything in the way that could possibly uh, get melted by the welding. There's a lot of stuff in the framework here for the floor that's just tacked. Um, there's a lot of places like the transfer case mounting brackets need to be properly welded. Um, there's some braces. Uh, these cross members here need to get welded permanently. So there'll be a lot of welding. I'll probably spend a couple hours at this. Uh, it's going to be pretty boring, so I'm not going to videotape too much of it. Okay, so I just got a ton of welding done. Um, all those places where we had just temporarily tacked, um, I've gone back and welded over and everything is solid and secure. 
Um, I'm looking at the schedule. I don't think I'm going to get to the rad this week for various reasons, but I am going to look to the shocks, and I also have some other odd jobs to do. Uh, yesterday I worked a little bit on this wiring. I didn't do any video. Um, I pulled the wiring harness that we have out so I could weld, and then I put it back in place and kind of tidied things up and organized. Um, you really have to stay on top of this or it gets out of control. Um, we're slowly adding circuits to the system, um, but it very quickly becomes a rat nest of wires. I am trying to track down something to use as like a fuse box to uh, mount the relays and the fuse panels in and have all the wiring kind of converge to one place and keep it neat and tidy. So working on that. This is just a temporary dash panel. Um, when we get further into the fabrication, we'll have something um, we're going more permanent that replicates at least better replicates the original, but we needed some place to put some warning lights and some switches. So you can see the back of the panel here. We've got a switch for the main ignition circuit, uh, a button for the starter motor, and there's also now a switch that controls a relay and it controls the radiator fan. That's part of the steering system from the original uh, setup on this axle. Um, normally that would have been on the top and on the driver's side that kind of curved piece there and it would have tied into the tie rod or the steering box with some linkage. Now I'm trying, I want to remove this. It's bolted on, there's three bolts. I've already worked on it a bit. It is pretty solid. Um, worst case, I'll just cut it off, but that's something that is also in the works. We just want to kind of clean up the bottom end here and have it as streamlined as possible. Okay, got it off. That was no easy task. Interesting, it's got these wedges. You see the holes are tapered, and there's these little wedges that go in. At first I thought they were washers, but then one of them started to drift out and fell out. But, uh, had to heat it up two or three times. It was really tricky because the boot for the uh, lower ball joints in there. Try not to melt it. But uh, a little bit of heat, WD-40, and a lot of elbow grease, basically a sledgehammer. It came off. So, a little cleaner down there now. Less stuff to get caught. There's the original shock mount on the front axle, and I think we can use this. Um, it looks like there's a sleeve or a bushing that's kind of seized on there. I've seen that before with other stuff. So I'm going to try to get that bushing off and see if our shock will fit over that stud. And then that's the old kind of shock tower from the frame. We're going to kind of tie into that. So hopefully this will go pretty smoothly if I'm able to actually line everything up and use that shock mount on the axle. It'll be a little more difficult if I have to move that or fabricate something. I was hoping that this part here was a sleeve and it just kind of rusted on there, but it appears that this is one solid unit. Um, and the problem I have is the shock, the hole for the shock mount won't fit over this. Um, it needs to be a little bit smaller in diameter. So after um, looking at this and kind of figuring out what was the easiest, simplest way, uh, I decided to take the shock tower and cut it so I could mount it on a slight angle. And that allows the shock to go down and line up with the original shock mount a little closer. Now I did want to use the pin that came off of that shock mount, but I couldn't get it to work, the angle wasn't right, and I would have had to do extend it out. So I decided to turn the shock sideways, you can see kind of how it's orientated, and add two little tabs that it will bolt in between. You can see the one tab is tacked in place right there, and once I figure out where it's going to be positioned, I will add the outside tab and weld it in place. 
And those are the tabs. I just made four of them, two for each side. And I went out and bought a couple of half inch by three inch grade eight bolts. And this should work. And it ultimately was the simplest thing to do. Okay, so that's the shock tower welded in place. And I've got the two brackets welded. It's a slightly better view. You can actually see the shock in there. It's just a coil over gas shock that I picked up at Kenny U pole. You can just see the mounting point there. And then the shock goes up and bolts into the top of the shock tower up there. So you can see there's the angle. The trickiest thing is going to be replicating this on the other side. Um, but uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we got the front shocks done. I uh, didn't quite have time to get to the rad. Um, that'll be a project for another day. Uh, it's definitely on the to-do list. We have some other things to work on. I got to start looking at figuring out how to do shocks for the rear axle. And we also want to uh, remount the alternator so it fits inside the engine bay. So these are all things coming up. If you have any questions, leave them down below. And if you want to see more videos of Project 222, definitely like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.